Hey class, this video is going to be a bit longer than the other ones because simply it's going to be a little more complicated, but we're going to walk through it and everything will be fine. So we've already discussed a bit on the what if. Now we're going to see, or rather if else, now we're going to see is if, else if, else if, or else. And you can actually increase this into more and more as many as you need. But for the demonstration of here on the if, else, if, else condition statement, I want to run through this. So here we go. So in front of you, you have the two variables that I've identified. The X has a value of 5 and the Y has a value of 9. So I have a condition, my first if statement. And I'm going to compare if X value is greater than the Y value. And if it's true, then I'm going to print my X value a string is greater than and my y value. All right. However, if it happens to be the y value is greater than the x, I want to print the y value is greater than the x value. Additionally, I want to check see if these two values are equal to each other. And if so, I want to print this out. x is equal to y. And if no condition is met, then my last else statement is going to say, I have no idea. Now, the first thing I want to point out is typically on a situation like this, you always want to end the condition with a default value or a default. And this way, it'll find something to hit and then end this block of code. So that's the first thing I want to say. Second thing is, I typically always like this type of block syntax, as I mentioned in the other video. You can do it different ways, but I prefer this, and it's a preference. Also, I want to point out is that additionally to this block of code that you have here, if you have noticed the indentions on these, so here's my if condition. And it's indented over like five spaces in my block of code. Here's my elf, else if condition, a block of code. And the reason is Python is very particular on the indention. So you, if you happen to have an error of the indentions, this is why. Because why is this? Because Python is reading this as one block of code and it's expecting it to be indented to read this proper. Okay, that's the easiest way to say it. But I say all that just to keep in mind, keep it nice and clean. So let's go ahead and run our first run on this module. And then let's see the outcome. So we have nine is greater than five. And that is true. So we also know that the Y was first, so it hit this one. Now we can expand this a little bit and let's just go ahead and put in here second condition, all right? And let's go ahead and also add in third condition. And we can also put in our first condition. Also, just want to point out, I do this a lot whenever I'm creating a new program. I print out on certain conditions just to ensure on display that it at least has gotten to that far into the programming code. And this is good for troubleshooting, etc. And we may do that later on in the course. But for now, I just want to go ahead and rerun this once more. Ah, forgot my parentheses. Go ahead and rerun it. Let's go ahead and put those all in there. All right, it should be good. All right, let's do this. So run it. And we have nine is greater than five and it met the second condition. So let's go ahead and switch these up. 
And this time, let's see which one it outputs for us. Go ahead and run that module. Let me speed this down a little bit. And now we have 9 is greater than 5, which we knew, but it's the first condition. So it met this condition here. So let's go ahead and do one more here for the equal. File save, run the module, and our outcome is equal to, and it met the third condition. So this is a really good way to go ahead and, as you're creating it, to ensure that it's hitting that condition that you want and the outcome that you want. Later on, you can simply go in here and just go ahead and put comments so that it will ignore it. And more importantly, you know that this is the second, first condition, etc. And you can add on to it as well. But I just wanted to provide you, it can get complex. And this is a good way to do that, to make sure. Now, in the prior video, second part of this video, I want to show why did I originally put these print statements like this? Because it looks ugly on the output. Well, the reason is, is because I first wanted to make sure that the conditions are all meeting as I want them to meet, right? So I'm going to change this back real quick. So how in the world will I be able to, A, check the condition, which is a numeric value, a data integer, right? Data type of integer, but yet print this out where it's all in one line. And if you remember back in the prior videos when we talked about data types, there is a way that you can change a data type of a numeric into a string. And if you don't remember, let me show you. So I want to go ahead and print the X, which is fine. And I want to concatenate it, meaning I want to combine a string to that. And then I also want to put in Y at the end. Now, ultimately, this is what I want as an outcome. And this way, it will print the value of each, but also tells me one is greater than the other. All right. But how do I do this again? Well, I cannot actually put it in here before my if condition. And the reason is because, let's say an example, I convert the 9 and the 5 into string values, and then I, my condition is going to run, it's going to read them as string values, and it's not going to work, right? Because it's not comparing that numeric value, which one is greater than the other, because this is a math operator, all right? But what we can do is after our if condition is met, so we can simply say x is equal to string value of x, and y is equal to string value of y. Now this will do a couple of things for us. This will allow us to go ahead and numerically compare which one is greater to the other. And if that is met, it's going to give us our actions. Remember I said you, you can have many actions based upon the result. And this will also provide my X as a string value and my Y as a string value, allowing me to print it out or display it out on one line. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's see what our outcome will be here. And here it is. Let me move this up so you can see it. Our outcome is indeed 9 is greater than 5. Note also it's all on one line because Python is reading this all as if it is a string. And one more thing I want to point out before I'll end this video. The other thing that you might notice is I'm purposely putting a space or two between my um, print, uh, string delimiter here and the reason is because if I happen to have it bunched up as like this and I print it out accordingly 
know, print out over here. It's all bunched up together with no space between my variable values and my string value. And this is the reason why I do that. Just so that it's a little bit nicer as the outcome. So I hope that helps you out. And this is what I'm going to challenge you guys to do. After this video and we look at this, I want you to go in and actually write this program. But I want you to also convert that data type over into a string value and then give me the outputs. Change up the numbers for me. Rewrite this code as your own. Be sure to put your name up here and the date that you're doing it. And then submit it over to me. I like to see it. Thanks.